Morning, everybody. Uh, it is bright and early in the morning on Monday, uh, April 19th. It's 510 in the morning here in Connecticut. And um, I got my coffee and I'm ready to go. Uh, sometimes doing these videos super early in the morning can be really helpful. I have a little girl. She's turning six this summer. Um, and my wife's up early to go to work. So sometimes like beating them to the punch to get up uh, early to do these videos is the best time to do them because the house is nice and quiet. Um, so anyhow, but welcome to week seven. We have two more weeks left of this course. So congratulations for making it this far. At this point, uh, hopefully your position papers have come in. Um, um, so I will be grading those over the next couple of days. You'll be, uh, should receive a grade for the position papers by Friday. And the discussion board should be back to you by Wednesday. Uh, just as a reminder, I offer uh, office hours on Tuesday nights. Uh, you can go ahead and check the time for those office hours. If you scroll up and you go to course information or meet your instructor, the information should be there. And you can sign on to office hours using Collaborate. If those office hours times uh, don't work for you, you could always reach out to me uh, through email or through phone and I can get back to you. Okay, so unit seven, week seven. So we're talking about uh, we're focusing on point of view. And uh, we find out that there's two different types of point of view. There's first person point of view and there's third person point of view. There is a second person, but it does not used that often. Um, first person point of view is when the author puts you directly into the shoes, into the mind of the narrator telling the story. Um, I do this. I do that. We did this. You know, that's first person point of view. And there are pros and cons to that, right? If you're inside the mind of the narrator, um, you're going to most likely feel sympathy for that narrator because you know them best out of any character in the story. Um, and you're hearing the story through their lens. So people who they think are bad are going to come across as bad, but they may not be. People who are good are going to come across as good, but they may not be. It's all kind of biased because you're hearing it through the mind and the interpretation and the psyche of this narrator. Third person point of view is when we sort of take a step back. And it's almost like we're, we, we from afar are watching the action take place. And we can sort of make our own judgments about the characters based on what they do and what they think. Or if we find out what they think, what they say, how they look, so on and so forth. Um, and again, there are different benefits and, and uh, uh, negatives to that point of view. With third person point of view, you can have limited or omniscient. And omniscient is uh, it's a word I learned going to 12 years of Catholic school. Um, and they, uh, one of the things that they taught me about God was that God was omniscient, meaning God sees all and knows all. And that is what third person omniscient is. Um, so we're hearing the story from afar, but the author gives us a superpower sort of, he or she lets us uh, get into the minds of every character in that book. And we, well, most characters, and we know what they're thinking. We can read minds. Um, so it's an interesting choice for an author. But anyhow, um, a point of view can be used to do a lot of different things. And um, well, I mean, one thing it can do is it can help us, you know, as I said, gain sympathy for characters. Um, it can help us um, create something called uh, suspense or dramatic irony. Um, and this can be used in film a lot. If you're a fan of horror movies like I am, I love uh, horror movies or a good horror movie. Actually, even the bad ones. The bad ones are good too. Um, but they use this technique a lot through how, what they choose to show us in the camera. So if you're watching a horror movie and you see the killer or the monster or whatever, go inside of a house in the beginning of the movie, right? And then all of a sudden it cuts and they show the carload of, of teenagers or whatever driving up to this house. We know that the killer's in there, but they do not. Their point of view is skewed. They don't know what we know as a viewer. And so that creates something called tension, suspense, or dramatic irony. When the viewer or the reader uh, knows something that the characters do not know or that most of the characters do not know. Um, so that's something that point of view can be used for too. In real life, um, point of view is also important. Think about any argument that you've been in in your life. You have one interpretation of the facts 
that other person has another interpretation of the facts. And if there's a third person involved, they probably have a slightly different interpretation of the facts, right? And that's what really is the source of all our arguments when you boil down to it. Person A thinks this, person B thinks this, and the truth is probably somewhere in the middle, right? Um, but another thing with point of view, um, there was a great TED talk, and I can't remember the name of the woman who gave it, but it was called The Danger of a Single Story. And it was all about how if we only listen to one story about a particular group of people um, and don't try to broaden our horizons and gain a full picture of them, that can be very dangerous because we're only hearing one interpretation. Um, so in life, really, point of view applies to uh, sort of gives us a nudge uh, and reminds us that um, sometimes our point of view in life can be skewed. And we have to ask ourselves, well, am I making judgments about people? based on one point of view, or am I hearing multiple points of view? Um, and at least, you know, I think in life that we should be trying to um, gain our points of view or gain our beliefs based on multiple points of view, but that's just me. Um, so that's point of view in books, point of view in film, and then point of view in real life. This week, here's how I would sort of approach the week, okay? You have two things. You have a Unit 7 discussion board, which asks you to take the point of view and turn it inward, which is kind of a cool assignment. And it asks you to choose one of the following interview questions from Indeed.com and respond to the question in two well-developed paragraphs. In your response, be professional, academic, and honest. So here are the choices. What motivates you? What are you passionate about? What makes you unique? What are your greatest strengths? In what areas would you like to improve or how would you, how would others describe you? I love these questions. I particularly like how would others describe you because it forces us to think outside of ourselves. Um, and then of course, always, what are your strengths and what would you like to improve? It's always good to think about the, you know, what makes you great and then also where you would like to be great. And then you've got this uh, unit seven literary response, which we'll talk about more on Wednesday. So make a plan for the week, figure out how you're going to get everything done, figure out what works for you. Oh, and I also forgot to mention the readings, of course, right? Um, but yeah, make a plan, figure out what works for you, and I'll check back in with you guys on Wednesday. I hope you have a great week and reach out to me, please, if you need anything. All right. Bye.